is cold out there. I tell you guys. When I tell you that it's cold, you better believe it. It is freaking cold out there. I just came from outside and it is freaking cold outside, man. I tell you. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Look, I'm going to tell you what an old schooler told me back in the day when I started driving. And he gave me a little bit of a. Uh, a little bit of winter tips and he was like yo while you out here grinding make sure like if it's like real real cold if you're up under a trailer don't set your brakes uh in other words don't pull your brakes out um especially your tandems because your tandems are the ones that get that uh get frozen real quick so if you're up under a trailer, just pull just uh just pull your tractor brakes, but keep your tandem brakes still set so you won't have to worry about about it freezing up in the morning and something like that. It pretty much worked out for me. You know what I'm saying? It it pretty much worked out pretty good for me. He also told me like alcohol and your airlines work good, you know, make sure you pour some in there. He also said alcohol in your in your windshield wiper fluid reservoir. He said that works good too. So, you know, just just a little bit of tips for some, you know, winter winter survival. But if you uh type up um, you know, go go to YouTube and type up winter winter Truck driving renter tips. I'm sure there's a gang of them out there. I think I, you know what? I, I think I do have, uh, I think I do have some renter tips. I think I got one. I think I did one last year, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Let me see. Winter. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I did one last year. Definitely uh definitely check out this uh this video right quick. Let me uh bring it up. Uh oh. Wait, wrong one. Uh let me bring that back. That's my <laughs> that's my what's your name? Uh download. <laughs> Y'all seen what I'm doing. This is what I've been doing all day. I've been editing and uploading to YouTube all day today. Um, I've been uh, editing and uh, uploading to YouTube all day today. So basically, I was chilling. I ain't nothing. I ain't had nothing to do today. Well, I had something to do today, but you know. Uh, okay. So, I don't. Uh, okay, hold on, right quick. Go. Hey. That shit. So uh, also, this is uh back when. There we go. This one right here. This is when uh. I can't get around it. So this is about uh, you can't get two years ago. Fast forward a little bit. Here we go. That I'm gonna give you guys to get you prepared for winter driving. Of course, I have to write all this stuff down. You know what I'm saying? Here's some things you should know if this is your first, which it is because you just graduated out of, out of truck driving school. This is your first winter on the road, all right? Number one. Change your standard washer fluid for ice cutter fluid. Summer stuff will freeze and make your problems worse. Yeah, so definitely uh definitely check that out, man. That's 
That brings back some memories. Two years ago, J and R Schwugel. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I want to uh, come on right quick and um, do this uh, interview podcast. Um, but this is a flashback because this interview was done about a year about a year and a half ago i did this interview with this uh young lady driver uh at the time she uh started with uh swift and it was during the time when i wanted to make the call video to swift at first i didn't want to call swift you know because everybody everybody and their mama wanted me to call Swift. They they was like, look, call Swift, call Swift. And everybody knew the reason why uh at that time that uh you know call you know th that you wanted to call Swift. You really didn't want to know about the company at you know you didn't want to know nothing about the company at that time. But I decided to give Swift a call, and I believe that call, it really didn't go all that high. Um, I think I called two recruiters that I tried to talk to, and, you know, they was pretty much trying to, uh, you know, they, they, they act like, they act like once they knew that I was just doing my research and, you know, I wasn't I wasn't ready to come on yet, then they didn't have no more intentions on talking to me. At least at least that's the feeling that I got. But the young lady, uh the young lady driver, she came she got on with Swift and um uh, and her experience with Swift at that time was not all that hot. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play the video uh, of the interview with her. Uh, she want to remain uh, she want to remain anonymous. <laughs> um, she want to uh, remain anonymous because at that time she was still thinking about going with Swift. But right now, I'm not sure if uh, if she's still with Swift or not. I I don't think so. At least I wouldn't I wouldn't think she is, but um I did I did reach out to her and we did chop it up a little bit and I let her know that I was gonna go ahead and release the video. So I don't I think when I talked to her she said that uh she's not with Swift no more. So and she didn't go back to Swift either. So all right guys. Uh I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys want to reach out to me and uh, chop it up about your experience or something like that, definitely leave me a G, uh, leave me an email at lockoutmenpodcasts at gmail.com. Uh, hit me up in the DM at Instagram or leave it in the comments below, man. You know, my hand, you know, I'm extending my hand out to you. I appreciate you guys coming on, sharing your experience out here in the trucking industry, especially for these new jacks that's coming in. You know, they, they use my platform for, uh, you know, for knowledge. And, you know, I like to, I like to bring that out there to you guys. So if you like content like this and more, definitely subscribe, comment, share, like the like the video and um and yeah let's uh let's get into this uh interview i'll come back to you guys in another video you guys take it easy peace Alright. Alright, what's up guys to a special edition of Lockout Men Makes the Call. You guys have been asking for it for the past two seasons. I came, I saw, I'm I'm I I, I kept putting it off for obvious reasons. But 
I'm going to do it for you guys. But before I make the call to this particular company, I have a, a special young lady that had experience with this company to give you guys a little bit, uh, give you guys a little bit of background of what y'all be uh, looking into in a certain area. So without further ado, Miss say what's up to the YouTube community. Hey everyone, this is your girl is coming to you live from New York. What's good with you? All right, all right. So, we uh yeah. we we spoke uh we spoke a while back, and uh, mm -hmm. you said uh, you came into the trucking game about a year ago. Am I right? About a year ago or two? yeah, about a year ago, and. Uh, and you wanted to stay up in the area where you was at, so you're out of New York, so you want to stay a, at least a little bit close to where you was at, and you decided to go with... Swift. <laughs> tell us, tell Don't us... Judge me. <laughs> tell us your experience <laughs> with uh, Swift Transportation. Okay, well, like you said, I needed to stay as close to home as possible, so they actually offered me the dedicated regional account with Walmart. And um, my recruiter at the time gave me the impression that I will, you know, be driving pretty much the entire Northeast, um, covering, you know, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Maine and so forth and so forth. I hate the Northeast. Um, just want to throw that out say there. It again? I hate the Northeast. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. Go ahead, continue. Yeah, I'm starting to see the reason why most people hate the Northeast, and I also see the reason why uh, Walmart decided to pay um, so much as you know for new drivers. They start off with 53 cents per mile. In case anyone out there is still interested, after we finish with this interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, like I said, after speaking with my recruiter, uh, she felt that the Walmart dedicated Northeast account would be best for me. And um, at the time, we thought I was only going to be covering, you know, the entire Northeast state. Right. Um, of course, like most recruiters, they pro promise you to the moon and back. They promise you this, promise you that. All right, so now it's time for me to get ready to go. Now, I was told that I get a sign-on bonus for 3000 which I think is the lowest sign-on bonus compared to most companies, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But anyway, you know, training, the orientation is supposed to be for three days. You only get paid for two days of the orientation. Mm -hmm. And that's at, what, $110 per day? Okay. Um, I was promised to have a female trainer. Right. Non-smoker. Um, the reason why I really pushed to have a non-smoker because because you don't smoke. I I don't smoke. I quit seven years ago. Yay! And um, I I didn't want to be around it. Um, I get to orientation. Every, no, let me back up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take <laughs> your time. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. I get. I, I, I was told to go catch my bus at a particular stop and that they would already have me registered and I get to uh, Grand Central Station to find out that my bus ticket that I was given did not have a seat available. Mm -hmm. So that was the first problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now I'm standing at, you know, at the bus terminal for over six hours trying to get a bus driver to allow me to get on the bus because I needed to make this orientation class. Right. So finally, I ended up with a sister who let me on the bus. I get to Harrisburg, PA. Me and three other Swift drivers are there with U.S. Express drivers, and I we waited three hours for someone to pick us up from Harrisburg Terminal. All right. So, so that was the so <laughs> was three hours, man. I mean, was that when yeah. you talk when you talk to the recruiter? I mean, when you talk mm -hmm. to the recruiter and the recruiter set all this up for you, yeah. what what did after you told the recruiter? What what was all that? I mean, what what I, why? Well, she told me the day before I left that she guaranteed 
you know, because they spoke to someone in operations mm-hmm. to guarantee me a female trainer, non-smoker, that was doing the same Northeast Walmart dedicated account. Right. Okay, so after me and two other people were waiting in Harrisburg, PA, over three hours for someone to pick us up, um, if you are not familiar with Harrisburg Terminal, it is not the safest part of PA. <laughs> okay. So it is after 12 a.m. in the morning, and um, finally they send a new driver who was actually waiting for a load to come pick us up in the most raggediest passenger van. <laughs> okay. We were praying that we would make it. Okay. And then we had to sit in this van for another 45 minutes because it was a 40 minute, 45 minute drive from Harrisburg, PA, to um, to the terminal, Jonestown. So yeah, Jonestown, um, Pennsylvania, to the terminal. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So that 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 was the first bad experience. Um, All right. The second bad experience is during orientation. They tell me that they do not have a trainer for me. But the recruiter who told me, huh? But the recruiter told you that that you had one. The recruiter told me that I had one, someone from operations. So now the coordinator, of course, is trying to contact my recruiter to find out why I was told all of these things. And of course, we cannot reach my recruiter. <laughs> to this day, she still has yet returned any of my phone calls or text messages. And how long okay. ago? How long ago was this? This was uh, October. Into the into February, she's she or he still haven't got in contact with you over. I still have not gotten in. No one. She was not answering anyone's phone calls because they wanted to know why did she promise me this? Why did she promise me that? So anyway, um, like I said, at that time orientation was for three days. They now changed it to two, from what I understand. Okay. So no one had a trainer after orientation so we were all sent back to the hotel for a fourth day yes they do pay you for it now um, di- on the fourth day uh-huh now this sounds like what happened to me up at uh up at us express when i started with them several years ago uh we okay. didn't we didn't or at least i i well we because it was another it was another driver too but uh we didn't let me see we went I got hired on with U.S. Express like the week before Christmas, and okay. I did not start driving until the second week of February. That's that's how long that's how long we literally had to wait for a trainer. Wow. Okay. So was it as long as wow. mine? <laughs> well, I'm about to get to that. Okay. Okay, so after the fourth day, um, they sent us back to the driver's lounge, and I'm seeing everybody else's trainer slowly but surely pull up, introduce themselves, and mind you, they had us sitting there from 7.30 in the morning. So like around 3-ish, I realized, hey, you know, I'm the last one here. (laughs) Where's Mm -hmm. my trainer? So I go back to the main building, and they still do not have a trainer for me. Right. So it, it, it turns out that with that particular account, now I'm not going to bash the entire company. Okay. That particular account for the Walmart Northeast dedicated account, they do not have too many trainers willing to train females. Okay. 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 So that's what the problem was. Now, one thing with Swift, if you tell them that you have at least six months experience or three months experience, you won't even have to wait for a trainer. For some reason, they was just sending people out, <laughs> mm-hmm. being upgraded straight from orientation, okay? Unfortunately, okay. my experience prior to Swift was not strong enough. Okay. So, um, she's standing there trying to call different people to see if they're willing to train a female. Of course, all of them are saying no, you know, I guess because one of the trainers had a allegation in the past. Right. You know, which I can respect that, but, you know, I was told all of this was set up. Otherwise, I would not have went. Okay. So she finally begs a woman who does not like training females because it turns out that this woman has an alternative lifestyle and is married. You know, (laughs) you figure out the rest. Right. And I guess that might have caused problems. So that was her reason of not wanting to train women, but 
because she, I guess, owed her a favor. She asked her, would she be nice enough to train me? And she agreed. Right. Unfortunately, this person was already in for some personal home time. Okay. So, they give me another bus ticket. <laughs> okay. To send me back home. All right. So, and this is... Bus trip, so, mm-hmm. so, this is day what? what? What day are we on right now? Same day or this we'll, is... We're on, we're on day four. All right, this is day four since uh, since the... Since orientation okay. on a Monday. All right, so this is day four. How many days total since the the uh, the uh, Greyhound uh, trip? Well, they sent me on a Greyhound, Greyhound that night. It was like around 6.30 when they approved my ticket. And I said, can you guys make sure I have a seat this time? Because getting there, I didn't have a seat. <laughs> But um, it took me 15 hours to get back home. All right. Yes. Yeah. So um, I get home, and I stayed home for about five days until she met up with me at my local Walmart. Okay. Yeah. So, so how? Um, so how was it? Okay. So you. Uh, so you get there. You. You get on the truck. She was a smoker, by the way, so I had to deal with that. (laughs) All right. So you get on the truck with her. You get on on the truck with her. Uh And I lasted two weeks. I came home on a 34-hour reset. Unfortunately, she got sick, quote-unquote, and decided to take a leave of absence. And I stayed home waiting for a trainer for almost two months. So we looking yes, at... Yeah, they were paying me at the time. They were paying me um, regular $110 per day. But, you know, that's not enough for anyone to pay their bills and take care of children. But I was on payroll, and they were not able to successfully find me another trainer. Wow, so we looking, so, at, we, we looking at two months and nine days? Of- yeah. Of and, and you only been on the truck for two weeks. So what's what's your experience? Two, two, yeah, two weeks and actually two days. Uh, and something was going on because I was not trained on how to use the Qualcomm. Um, how was your experience? Know, well, in two two weeks, I had to have gotten more than thirty four hours because you're required to have two hundred. So how was your so experience? How was your experience uh, on the? How was your experience on the truck? For those two weeks? Um, the experience on the truck with her was fine. Um, you know, you, you could just tell she's not really good at hospitality. You know, this is my poor maid, and that's that. She didn't really go out of her way to kind of make me comfortable. I do know that a trainer is supposed to make sure you have a closet space and at least one drawer. I had neither. Okay. <laughs> and, of course, I had to deal with the cigarettes. But, um... Other than that, she's an excellent trainer. I will give her that. Okay. Um, but I don't know what happened after that because she never came back for me. You know, from what I understood, she took a personal leave of absence, and they were unable to find another trainer for me. So I stayed on payroll with them while I seeked employment somewhere else. All right. And so- to this day, they still have never found me a trainer. They still have you on payroll? No, they still do not have me on payroll. Okay, no, they but they, no. but they haven't, but they, they still haven't found you a trainer either. They still have not found me a trainer for that division. So now, what I was being offered was the opportunity to at least get my hours by agreeing to go with a trainer over the road. And that you, and you my, know, that 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 should be a no because the, the over the over the road experience versus it's not the same it's not yeah it's it's not the same than training for a dedicated account that's what they did over at u.s express the u.s u.s express is no uh, it's virtually no different because if they can't if they can't find a dedicated trainer they will Mm -hmm. they will go outside of the box and bring in an otr guy but right but bumping dots at least train you with a dedicated route right See you 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 won't know you you won't know the route you you won't know the routes you don't exactly. you don't know the you don't know the stores you don't know whether you or not if it's in, you, you get into the stores yeah. 
and you don't know how the you don't know how the operation of the store works versus correct versus being with somebody that do know the operation and that do know how to get to the stores and that do could tell you whether it's blindside or not you know exactly a OTR exactly. OTR driver can just teach you OTR that's that's basically about it all right so what they wanted to do was to just get me OTR so that I can get the hours so that I can upgrade and then have me later on <laughs> ride out with someone now one thing I will say with them I was under the impression that I had to cover all the states but no you're able to do a dedicated within a dedicated if that makes sense okay so because I lived in a particular part of New York, I'm not going to put my business out there. Right, right. Um, and that's the route she had. She recommended, you know, hey, this girl catches on quick. She's an excellent driver. You know, she just needs to learn the Qualcomm and learn how to back. I recommend her for this for two reasons. One, she's, she's good at it and I have confidence in her. And two, because she's a single mom and needs to be as close to home as possible, this will be perfect for her. So with them, you are able to pick a dedicated within a dedicated. So I never had to, I've never once drove to any of the other states. I still haven't been to Maine, you know, so I was able to just target on that particular part of New York. All right. So that's one good thing. All right. And they do, while you're training, let me put it out there. Okay. While you are with a trainer. Um, you do get $110 per day, and any time you have over 40 hours, they pay you minimum wage according to the state at which you reside. So that's something my recruiter did not tell me. I learned that, you know. Kind of like the hard so way. That, that's good. Well, yeah. it, it works out for your, you know, best interest because you actually are earning just as much as the, as the trainers. You know, mm-hmm. you're not just bringing home 550 a week. So what the, you so. So before I before I end it, uh, end this mm-hmm. uh, with the going back to the trainer, were okay. were you uh, for the two weeks? Were you able to drive or anything like that? Was, I mean, I did drive, and I I still question the the amount of hours that they have recorded because I know good and well, in seventeen days total, I have more than 30, 34 hours of drive time. Now, that, that's crazy. Did so, she, you know, one thing I will suggest to people, try to make sure you learn how to operate the Qualcomm ASAP. Do not rely on them to sign you in. Do not sit there and just trust them because, you know, while they're training, their goal is to also make sure that you don't stop them from making their money. Exactly. So, exactly. you do the math, we, 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 we're, we're required to drive at least eight in the beginning hours there's no way in 17 days i only drove 34 hours gotcha gotcha you know unfortunately i have no way to prove that because i did not sign myself in all right well Honda, thank you very much for uh giving us a little bit of giving us a little bit of information about this uh about swift and their walmart dedicated uh with that northeast (laughs) With that yeah. said, let's get into the video of calling Swift Transportation. 